Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be looking at this Hornby Terrier, the um, new tooled one from Hornby. And um, basically I'm going to be unboxing it and reviewing it. As you can see in the background we are back on Hither Realm so it's going to be some more interesting scenery for mine out which is nice. Um, but yeah we're going to get into the, we're going to look around the box first actually. So as you can see on the front, this is um, the later BR livery um, terrier, which is in keeping with the era of the layout. And then you can see it's got the running number and everything. But then if we spin the box round, um, if I like, oh, there's the price. That's how much we paid for it from the model shop. It was already DCC fitted, which is all right. If you look here, um, this gives you some history on the terriers in general. So about when they first designed, who designed them, where they finished their working days and all sorts really. And you can see it gives you a slight more bit of information here on the Terrier. This is 0p. And then, I don't know what it says around here, I haven't really studied the box yet, sorry that's my arm. Just says pretty much the same information there as it did, and then it says DCC fitted there. That is pretty much everything that this um, box says on the outside. So then, I don't know if it's just a sleeve or anything. I'll try push it out. Okay, so I've taken out what I would call the sleeve. Just left it over there on the tramway for a minute. And you're left with like this little, I suppose you could, some people call it like the block of ice. Um, that's what we've been left with here. So it's very well, it's quite a thick type of thing. It's very well packaged. Um, and then, yeah, just says the same things that you can see through the sleeve. But yeah, we're going to um, get past this bit. Okay, so I've taken all the sleeves out on the box, and then um, you see the detail pack there, we'll look at that in a minute. And then here we have the model, so if I just quite simply grab the model, I'm just going to put it on the tramway for a minute, hopefully. Right, there we go. And now you can see the model, if I just slide all that out of the way, and then we can look at it properly. As you can see in there, that was just the box. There is quite a bit of cab detail actually, that's very impressive. Not that my phone, recording off my phone is going to pick it up. Glazed windows, very nice. And that's it from one side. And then it's got an awful lot of pipe work on it, I'll have to say that. And then, alright, let's take a look at the detail pack a sec. And just see what's in here. So what is that? That's literally just a couple pipes and stuff really. Not really much in there. Don't know where they'll go for a minute. But as you can see in the floor, it's got that wooden panelled floor, which is a very nice touch, which really makes it worth the money that you pay for it, really. And you can see it is a fully painted cab in there, which is very nice. And you can see all the pipes and handbrake and all sorts in there. And then if you if I just spin them all around, try not to damage anything. This is on the other side, and then the buffer beams, don't know if it's got, it doesn't have sprung buffers unfortunately, but that's not that big a deal, it's, it's a very early engine, so I don't know if they would have sprung buffers in real life, it is a, based off a very old model, a model. It, the model is based off a very old engine I should say, you can see, I think it's a very heavy model, so I'm gonna say at best that it is, at least a die cast chassis, and then plastic bits, um, let's look at the whistle. I think the whistle is plastic, unfortunately, but I don't know, it's a heavy model, so I'm not really going to complain. They've definitely managed to put the weight in somewhere, I believe that's on the chassis. But that is the model detail-wise. Um, it comes with two NEM couplings, which is nice, so you don't have to fit them or anything. But, I don't know. Glazed windows, definitely worth the value for money, really. But yeah, we're going to get into the run into the model. So, I'll see you in a second. Okay, so this is going to be a small slow speed test. This is going to be the first movement of the Terrier, so I'm not even sure if it's going to move really. But we'll start putting the power up, this will be the first notch. Oh wow, and as you can see there is movement there. Um, that is as slow as it can go on this controller. I'm not sure if it could go any slower. But if you look at that, that is very slow. And you can't, there isn't too much motor noise either. Not as if it's like grinding or anything. Okay, so let's just speed it up a bit. 
we'll follow it, see if it makes it over the points. I'm, it wouldn't it wouldn't surprise me if it doesn't, because well, small engine, quite big points here. Wow, look at that. You, you really get a good shot of the in cab detail there as well. It's quite an exposed cab then, clearly. And then we'll come back the other way. Wow. Considering this hasn't even run in yet, I'll do a pulling power test in a minute as well. Well, after it's run in. Oh, little cut out there. Not too worried though, because it won't be running this slowly too often. Just follow it. That is a very good performing motor. I'm not quite sure what motor's in there. I'm very impressed with that. I'm going to leave it to run in now, and then we'll come back after it's running and do the test again. Okay, and it has just finished running in. Um, excuse the rain in the background. Can't really help that. As you can hear, it's pretty noisy. But it's just finished running in. I've put it on a couple coaches. I'll do a pulling power test in a minute. But right now, we're going to watch it run around, and yeah, should be good. Here we go. That's the wrong way. Can't make that up. I'll set it just to a nice steady speed. We'll follow it round for a while. Right, onto the pulling power test. Um, the terrace should just be coming through the station now. And this bit of track is a slight uphill gradient and it is pulling up four coaches. And as you can see, it is not struggling one bit. All the way up here. Every time you uncouple the coaches, they run away. Definitely confirms it's uphill. And as you can see, no problem, four coaches. That's really all I needed to pull around here. Normally would run it with two coaches. But yeah, I think that's definitely strong enough. Okay, so that just brings today's episode to a close. Um, overall review, I think the Terry is a fantastic model. DCC fitted, worth the value. Um, cab detail definitely makes it worth even more. Running, spot on. Due to dirty track, um, yeah. Not all our engines run brilliantly because of dirty track. The Terrier proved the other engines down, even ran over dirty track, which we haven't cleaned for a while. We really ought to, but that just means how well built the model is. Um, Diecast chassis, it's all very well built. Hopefully, we've done a good job on this one. Um, but yeah, I'd like to thank you all very much for watching this episode, and I hope to see you in the next one. Bye for now.